Thanks, Mark, and hello to all of you. And I'd like to introduce you to even a further concept, which is the idea that we could use stem cell biology and reprogramming technologies to access classes of human cells that we've never been able to study in the laboratory, let alone use for therapeutic discovery. Um, this is an idea which I think really maximizes some of the unique properties of especially pluripotent stem cells like human embryonic stem cells as really we can make a limitless supply of these cells for the first time. The crucible in which we've been trying to employ this strategy is a devastating neurological condition called amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which many of you may know as Lou Gehrig's disease. This is a progressive and almost universally fatal neurological condition, which is characterized by the destruction of the nerve cells which connect your brain to your musculature and that you use for every voluntary movement. Um, there's only one drug on the market for this condition, which has a small statistical effect on lifespan marketed by Sanofi Aventis. There are no disease altering or curative therapeutics for ALS. I would submit to you this is because we know very little about the particular human cells that degenerate in this condition and haven't been able to study them before. The classical approach for studying this disease has been to learn about the genetics which underlie this condition and then make mouse models which overexpress the mutant forms that make patients sick. Um, so far, there have been hundreds of clinical trials um, which have come forward from um, therapeutics developed through that approach. Um, they, um, there's been a 100% correlation between success in those animal models and failure in clinical trials. Um, so clearly, we need a new strategy. And um, the idea that uh, we might be able to mimic things that we have found in patients and apply them in the uh, tissue culture dish through this sort of strategy is becoming more and more attractive. And I'm here today to say that we've had some of our first fledgling successes in that kind of um, uh, activity. So clinical neurologists have discovered now that there are very early electrical changes in the brains of ALS patients, um, which even begin before they become outwardly sick. One of the questions that we've been asking is um, whether or not we can model aspects of these electrophysiological changes actually in the tissue culture dish with the patient's own motor neurons. The strategy that we take for doing that is to take easily obtained cells from patients like skin or blood and through reprogramming and stem cell technologies, turn them into the types of cells that are actually degenerating in that patient. Um, through collaborations with many people throughout the Harvard system, including neurologists at MGH, physiologists in Clifford Wolf's lab at Children's Hospital and my colleague um, Adam Cohen in the chemistry department here at Harvard, we've been able to show that indeed um, the cells of those patients in the dish manifest some aspects of those same changes that you see within their brain. We've been able to use those to identify potential therapeutics which we hope might uh, modify those electrophysiological changes in the patient's own brain. And excitingly, um, we now are beginning to get some of the first um, clinical returns on those experiments. So um, the key discovery that we made implicated an already approved anti-epileptic drug as potentially being disease modifying in, in ALS. We um, actually were able to take um, that drug into the clinic. Um, it's a GSK compound. Um, GSK also has taken forward that compound in, uh, into healthy patients in a, uh, in a shorter trial. And what I can say is that the disease in a dish model um, that we really used, at least so far in this first um, control study, had exactly the effect that we predicted that it would within those um, control individuals. And we're now waiting um, over the course of this next year for what the clinical readout will look like in ALS. So I can't say for sure yet whether or not um, this will actually have a disease modifying effect in patients, but at least we know the diseases in the dish um, predicted what the chemical effects would be in, in healthy populations, and now we're waiting to see. Um, I think there are some real um, obvious um, commercial possibilities that would come from this. Um, uh, now three years ago, along with uh, Adam in the chemistry department, we co-founded a company, um, Q-State Biosciences, which um, now has um, real collaborations using these types of technology in pain, epilepsy, cardiotox, and, and cardio discovery. And I think that there are opportunities looking out into the future for using these types of technologies both for very disease-oriented company generation as well as for um, approaches to make new forms of diagnostics that would go beyond um, DNA sequencing for predicting functional changes in, in patients. Thank you very much.